Hello YouTube, hope you had a great week. On the live show this Monday, I spent a little bit of time structuring a web app and talking about the structure of a web app. So it's, it was mostly a uh, DevOps show this week. The sponsor this week is Linode. Linode is a cloud hosting provider that provides virtual servers that makes any app, site or service flexible and scalable. Their pricing is good and simple. Uh, the service starts at five bucks a month for the smaller ones and then it just scales up in a very nice and predictable uh, pattern. So there are no hidden costs or like bills that just <laughs> They have a very good API and you can use uh, Terraform or Kubernetes to uh, deploy your fleet of servers. It's just like very nice to work with. Use a coupon code and the link in the episode description to get 20 bucks off when you create your account. Thank you, Linode. In the recording that you're about to see, you'll see me uh, go through how uh, the application that I, I, an application that I use for the Twitch stream itself, uh, how I deploy that and how the CI is, uh, is set up and how, how the, a how, little bit how the application is structured as well. This episode is particularly interesting to you if you're interested in uh, setting up a continuous integration workflow and how that uh, can uh, can be used in your app. I also show a little bit how uh, I automatically uh, deploy the application to Zeit now. I had a really good time this Monday hanging out with you and doing DevOps. Now over to the recording. Go! Okay, so um, what are we doing today? Um, we are uh, like, as you see, like the 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 chrome that i have here like around me we'll see this this like the my twitter name here and like the like the box that rotates info and uh sponsorship ads uh that is a react app and uh it's it's gradually becoming more and more complicated because like we have like a show sponsor and we have an episode sponsor and now we also uh have uh, Twitch subscriptions, um, so you can subscribe and support support the show via Twitch subscriptions. And when that happens, like I, I want that to show up in that box over there, and that means that we are we have to have a, a backend for this thing as well, and um, and that's um, that's what we're working on today. Um, and I am a little bit uncertain of of how to go about this if i'm honest um let's let's think about what what to do like let's uh, to do um let's just like figure out where we are first just figure out where we are um So let me open up the uh, FT overlay. This is the, the actual app that we are running. Let's see. I'm just gonna um, npm start. I think there's like, I'm, I'm gonna warn you, this is gonna be, a, I think this is gonna be a dev, DevOps episode. Um, so let's have a look at this, uh, this thing here. Like this is, have a look at this, the meta of this. Uh, so, wow. This is dude, there. Uh, so this is, this is the app, you know? Uh, and uh, it has these parameters here that we're passing in uh, and this is the, so this is browse like this is viewed in a web browser inside open broadcaster studio which is uh, the software that I use you see here that when I pass parameter like guest is true like it includes a guest and if it doesn't like there's no guest and I can also like do like the uh no, I found like there, 
can have like the the stream stream over overlay and and you know uh, I think we can also do starting soon no is it just soon yeah so all of this is just our like it, it's a react app and um so I have like the line node panel has it's kind of like dirty coded so far like the uh, the backend servers have been a little bit more good software practices but uh, the um, um, you know the the this thing the the app it's just a bunch of garbage really it's uh, it's it's a mess uh, so. We could be throwing things away a little bit here, maybe. Uh, and uh, I uh, have this um, in order to start subscribing. Uh, it's uh, Super Gladiator asks, "Are you using this right now?" Yeah, I am. So you're actually seeing what I'm what I'm using. Uh, and uh, so I have this little thing like it's subscribed subscriptions. <laughs> so we're listening to the Twitch subscription uh, feed a little bit inception, but that's the way it is. Um, and uh, it works like this: you uh, create a web socket, and then you uh, have this topic uh, topic name. Uh, and uh, this is how you do this is not a library by the way this is just web sockets in, in a browser uh, and uh, you attach to the on open event uh, and then when the socket is open you send a uh, message to the to on the socket uh, where you listen uh, and then you like in this data of the message you listen to topics there's gonna be topic name plus a channel ID. I'm gonna talk about this uh, this later. Uh, and you send in an OAuth access token. And from an architectural standpoint, the OAuth access token is problematic because, as I said, like Open Broadcaster Studio, it's, it just has like one web web view, right? So, uh, like, it doesn't really have like a there's no login interface there, really. Uh, so what I built is this. Um, I built like an interim web service, a little um, yeah, a little yeah, a little web service that just takes a secret that you pass it. And then it uh, grabs you an OAuth token using a refresh token that it has has stored uh, that that we can then use here. So it's kind of like a, a service that logs in for a something that doesn't have a, a capability to to be logged in. And then we uh, yeah, but uh, either way, as we listen here. Uh, we we also need to like actually listen to the, the subscriber messages and then uh, it handles these events here uh, and uh, as it that event is parsed um, it uh, yeah it checks that this is actually a subscribe event it's only we're only interested in those and uh, then we just parse it here. Uh, and we know this from the from the Twitch um, Twitch documentation what this looks like. So we have like cumulative months, and then we have streak month. This is a little bit of incorrect, honestly. Like these messages, um, the, the, I'm not entirely sure that I trust the docs at this moment. Uh, but this is a later later thing when we like this is just my dirty prototype that I built here. And David has not turned off his sound on his phone. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, like this thing where we check if something is a resub or not. Resub in uh, <coughs> Twitch 
Kind friend asked what's the purpose of the parsed uh, data, uh, this thing here. Yeah, like it's, this is a little bit unclear. Um, like you sh we should probably like do something like, um, Yes, event or something. Uh, like this. No, wait. Maybe it's ack or something. Because I think, I, I believe I added this because, uh, like, when we send uh, like the start message or something, um, this just sends like a acknowledgement message or something. Uh, so, so we want to we we don't want to try to parse that because it, it's not going to contain any data. So sometimes like the events are the events doesn't really have any data, it's just like an event on that channel, it's just like connected. I don't remember what, what the message was. And the pixelated points out that you could always chuck the whole thing into our path. Yep. So, ramda path, this is pretty cool. Whoops. Where do you have it? Path. Yeah, Ramda has this cool thing where you can like go th go down the entire thing and like go to. Uh, but um, I kind of like making things uh, explicit. Like I don't like uh, find myself going down a rabbit hole as soon as I start adding Ramda everywhere. Don Mardini asks, "Why are you using sockets?" Um, because when uh, a subscriber comes in whenever you hit subscribe and like oh you subscribe to the channel then I immediately want to show that on stream like immediate gratification uh, I don't want to be polling this client front says no uh, exactly like parse data is not always an object it might be um, there might not actually be any data so like for a subscribe event uh, that it's gonna be like the subscriber um, but, uh, mm, but, um, like say that a connected event, uh, or any other event might not necessarily be contain any, uh, contain anything. So you see here, like we were subscribing on, uh, quite, quite broadly here or no, no, not really, but like, I think, I think it's just an act of it. And the pixelated points out that uh, we can, uh, like, if we um, add Ramda here, uh, it's good. We could do something like this, where we uh, check like R satisfied, and then R includes channel subscribe events, data, topic, parsed. It would be pretty cool. But in this case, we are looking for the negative case, though. Because I, I like the defensive programming where you like go through like the incorrect cases first and like return and then um, and then do the proper processing. Uh, Pinnacle points out that this is an alternative. Yep. Yeah. Not sure if that's more readable though. It's cool, but client form says so it could be a string or an object. Uh, I don't know if it can be a string. I doubt that, but hypothetically, I don't know. Um, and this in this case, I don't. 
I think that it's either undefined or data. That's what my it assumes. But yeah, this is definitely a case where I it, it should have comments. It's a great point. Um, anywho, uh, so this is what the, this is what we're doing, and this is as far as I've gotten. You know, um, I am like I have this successful prototype of of this thing, but the code is. Um, the entire the entire thing here is honestly very messy, and I'm thinking about like starting this, uh, starting over on this because I will also want to have. Uh, oh my God, stripper boys, <laughs> with most most inappropriate name. Uh, dumped some bits into the chat. Oh, that's so nice of you. Uh, Spreading some love today, this Monday. Hope everybody is so good. Hope everybody is good today. Hope everybody's good. Anyway, so let me show you the the back end. Let me show you the back end. Uh, I'm gonna. So this is the token bridge. Uh, let me show you like this is deployed on now. By the way. Because that's what I'm trying out now. And let me reduce this font a little bit here. So at some point, I think that uh, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna be putting this on uh, on GitHub so that you can see these things as I work with it. That would be really cool. Um, it's not there yet, uh, but uh, it's gonna be soon. Um, so. Uh, this is how uh, the, the Lambda framework or structure that is uh, that's used by now. Uh, <laughs> Client front says, if site build a backup tool, will it be called yesterday or then? That would be very nice. Uh, yeah, so we just have this, um, we just handle the requests, we're doing some course crap here. Um, I'm right now, I think I'm a little bit fast and loose with this, but eh, that's the way it is right now. So if, um, if the URL is login, then we just pass it to the login function. Uh, if the URL includes callback, then callback and so forth. Uh, and uh, so you see here that I'm not using um, not using Express here uh, as a little bit of a uh, as a little bit of a uh, Darko Darko thanks mod gods um, I was saying yeah have a look at this right head here. I in I, I one thing that struck me when I was uh, when I was doing uh, doing express was that there is this thing in in express where you would do this and it just struck me like why this abstraction was like was does this really help us to abstract things this way. Isn't this just like hiding implementations to to a level where we have no idea what we're doing? Uh, like I think this this right head here location, this actually shows us what what is going on. So it's uh I don't know, I just I just realized that I kinda like, huh, like I, I really enjoyed like going back to node here and actually see what the hell we are doing, you know. Um, uh, and you see here like this is callback and for you who have implemented OAuth, uh, this will look uh, similar to you. So we have like this uh, login thing, login URL, like me actually um, uh, see if I can, I can perhaps like just 
Mm -hmm. I create a terminal here and do a. I don't think I can start this. Eh, the thing is like since this generates token as I won't like it, it won't be a good idea for me to oh well thinking like I should have it like I, I won't be showing how this actually works in uh, in this case because it's, it's gonna generate tokens and I haven't set up a test twitch account for this and which means that the token would actually be uh, Contains a lot of power for you, including like checking my Twitch stream key, which because this is like these, as I write here, these these um, this scope here is annoyingly broad. Um, yeah, but but either way, it's like it doesn't really matter. So we have like this request token, and this is what I talked about earlier. It's so that the overlay here which is like a web browser inside of a another software can get like can get a access token to the twitch api so that it can start subscribing to things dun, dun, dun. um dip, 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 dip. So let's let's have a look at request token here. Where's refresh? There's request token. So it ensures correct secret. Uh, and it, let's let's have a look at ensure correct secret. Uh, so ensure secret. It it parses JSON and checks that the uh, body secret here is equal to like a shared secret so the the server and the client uh, or the client being like this chrome here like the overlay uh, shares a secret uh, and because I'm allowed to in OBS open broadcaster studio I can pass in a secret as like a little parameter to the uh, uh, parameter to the, to the web view. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And if that secret is correct, let's go back to request token. Then uh, we load the refresh token. Uh, and uh, let's have a look at the refresh token here. Um, this is basically just uh, a store, like a the refresh token is, is stored in a in a Mongo database in like a database row, basically. David is providing me with chewing gum, which you will now yeah. suffer from. Uh, so the refresh token is like if you're not familiar with how OAuth or OAuth works. You have a refresh token and an access token. Bye, David. Close the door, please. Um, and the refresh token can possibly be chewing, chewing them here. It's just like... Um, God, where did I put the chewing gum? There. That's fresh. Um, Where was I? This is the most confused stream. <laughs> All right, so the refresh token is a long running token that the server has that allows you to uh, get uh, get access tokens with the, which are these short running uh, tokens. If we don't have that, we're gonna write like a 401 and then like say that we could not get new tokens with the refresh token probably expires go to login and then we go to like go to login to, to like set the service in a logged in state and store like the refresh token on the server um, 
and uh, then we save the refresh token and we return an access token. There's also this channel ID endpoint and this is a little bit of an annoying endpoint but um, channel ID so it also requires a secret um, honestly like this is not a particular secret information so we don't really need to protect it here but either way uh, what it does is that it uh, gets the channel ID of uh, the user which is the the fun fun function channel we will log in with the fun fun function channel here and that gives us the channel ID which is not the display name or username fun fun function is actually like a number and that is required to listen to the events on the cloud that's what we're doing now what I like this project is a little bit cool because if we look at I'm gonna I'm gonna be showing you some Zircle CI thing here. Like go to Zircle CI. Blue 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 and I'm gonna log in here. Log in. And I'm gonna do that off screen. Blue blue. Logging in off screen. Wow, this is exciting. Exciting passwords. Blip 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 blip. Wow, wow. Looking at the man who logs in. All right, let let's attempt this again. Circle CI. Flurp. Login. Hep. Login with GitHub. Thanks. Okay, so we have this service called Twitch Token Bridge, uh, which is already uh, honestly getting a little bit uh, like if you look at like this channel ID here, like that's not a token bridge thing. So like this is probably gonna be renamed to to something bigger, where it's like dumping ground of all the services. Of, of fun function is gonna be the fun fun function monolith maybe who knows um, and um, yeah if you, if you don't know how circle CI works it's a it's a CI service it goes and builds a project so if if we have a look at uh, github and I uh, jump to this project here. Um, like it has a bunch of, uh, no, yeah, let's look at this thing here, Twitch token store Mongo. Open. So we have a couple of, uh, unit tests in this here. Uh, so like checks this, you know, like the load refresh token that we uh, looked at before, like it tests that and it calls the Mongo client with the correct things and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, I can actually, I think I can trigger this job here somewhere. How do I do that? Mm. Jobs. I guess I can just re-trigger this. Yeah, rerun both workflow. So what it does is that it runs this last deploy here i think i can click this and see that first run this check which is like and then does an npm install uh oh cool i can activate web notifications yeah and after it has this npm install it actually cache this is cool with um circle ci which is part of what makes it so fast is that it uh, saves uh, Save the cache of things so that you can actually, if your npm setup has not changed, it can it can save um, it can save that completely uh, and like yeah, so you don't have to do npm install. I'll, I'm gonna show you a little bit how that works later, and then it runs the CI, 
Uh, and the CI, let me uh, show you. Why is uh, Twitch GitHub so slow today? Come on, baby. Click you. Um, if we look in package.json here, uh, you see that we, uh, for the C npm run CI, we just run the linter. And then we run the test and then we run npm audit. See here that whoop, we run lint. This is coming. Yeah, no warning for the linter. Uh, and then it uh, runs some some of the tests. And then it found zero vulnerabilities in the npm audit. Um, and it's also like if you look back here, like you also see that we have two jobs in this workflow. So, uh, Git, so CircleCI works with these concepts called workflows. Uh, so you can create like a workflow called check, for instance, here, which is just like, oh, it checks that the, the, the repository is what it is. Then you can create workflows that are dependent on that check works, which is in this case, like deploy production. Um, and uh, so what it does is that it installs uh, Zeit, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, hectic SC. I'm from Stream Elements. We like your stream, and believe we can help your project and save you some time. Yeah, you would also like save me some content. I like implementing these things myself. Um, I also don't honestly don't think that Stream Elements has existing components in order to integrate. Uh, um, stream notifications inside a uh, like a spray, it's like React Spring um, animation. I think that's very specific for my needs. Uh, oh, anyhow. So this uh, this deploys to this uh, Twitch token bridge here. Uh, so like, meep, bloof, not about there, but if I go Twitch token bridge, uh, I can go to log in here and it will send me to like Twitch. I'm not gonna log in right now, but yeah, this is how it how it works. Um, so as you see here, what you see this is actually continuous deployment happening. Um, so we have like these. Uh, let's see now. Uh, how do I see the complete workflows? Yeah, here. So we have this check, and then we have deploy production. I'm gonna show you, like this is remarkably easy to set up in Circle CI. So full disclosure, Circle CI is a sponsor of the show. Um, you can see like info in the in the episode description but i used circle ci even before i um, got them as a sponsor i've used them for many years and i think they're very robust so you create like this dot circle ci in your repository uh and with a config uh, yml and then you just connect your github accounts and tell them point them to this repo and that's all you do Darko says it doesn't have that, but it does have an event stream that you can use to get the data for your alerts. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. The Twitch API is so, like, annoying. Like, it just, like, I know you're trying to help, but you're just making it worse, honestly. Like, it's just... You go and you ask like, how do you get like subscriber events on Twitch? Should you use the PubSub API or should you use the uh, uh, use the webhook API? And when I asked that on Twitter, somebody said like, oh, you can use the IRC client. And now like then like stream elements come and says like, you should use our stream <laughs> API and you're like, Screw you guys. I'm just gonna make it with WebSockets. Um, it's like 
I want to control this myself. Plus, it's just fun. Like I, I, uh, I really like having uh, having my own. Client friend, sorry, I think that was kind of rude. Yeah, sorry. Like you're right, that was rude. I'm, I'm, I'm you're trying to help. Like Stream Elements, I'm sure that this is a great software. I mean, just like very, like I'm very frustrated with um, ecosystems where like there's just like this wide array of things to do implementations, and then Twitch doesn't really take a, a clear like doesn't show you clearly what it is that they want you to do. And then there are also third parties that implement things on top of this confusion. Anyway, so let's have a look at the zero call CI here. Let's start here with the workflows that we talked about before. Uh, so we specify the version, which is like the, the version of the Circle CI interface. And then uh, we have this build and deploy workflow. And it has uh, a couple of jobs. It has three jobs. It has uh, check, it has deploy staging, and it has deploy production. And the check is uh, what we talked about before. It runs the runs the the, 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 the CI command in the npm in, in the npm module. Uh, and then we have the um, uh, the deploy staging command, which uh, deploys only the master. So I have. Whenever I merge code successfully, whenever I do a pull request that passes the checks and is merged into master, then uh, this code runs and it deploys it to the staging environment. So master, staging. Uh, and then I also have a branch that, uh, oh my God, sorry, I'm off screen here. So bad of me, sorry so much. See here we have the, uh, the the master branch branches to staging, uh, and then we have deploy production, which uh, goes to uh, like the deploy deploys to production. Let's have a look here, uh, and the actual jobs here. Um, jobs that the workflow uh, refers to. So check is defined over here. Uh, so it uses a couple of defaults here. Like defaults, are th th this is just like stuff that you can re reuse. And like all the work jobs here are gonna be uh, relying on the node eight image, uh, stable node. Um, because I like to use old stable things and uh, we have a working directory and then we uh, do some steps. So we check out, it's just like, this is a, like a pre-built command that uh, since CircleCI knows about um, GitHub and has GitHub authentication, <laughs> authenticated, uh, it, um, uh, it, um, it can just do the checkout for us. We don't need any keys or stuff, it has a store. Then we have this, uh, we restore the cache based on the package, package lock.json. So if the package lock.json has changed, uh, it just reuses the cache. Otherwise it runs npm install uh, and then saves this cache based on the checksum of the package.lock. And then it runs the npm um, run ci command that we talked about earlier, which is linting, testing and npm audit. And then it's, as we talked about before, deploy staging here that is dependent on check. Um, look, look again here, like deploy staging requires check. Um, oh, sorry. Here we are back to deploy staging, uh, which is just checkout. Uh, and then it installs now, which is the CSTAR 
If you don't know what now is, it's called like this serverless deployment thing is similar to um, similar to Heroku, if you know what it is, uh, and a lot of these deploy node app kind of services. Heroku. Uh, talk to me, Guzman. I really enjoy Circle CI. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Yeah, it's a it's a good CI service. I'm really proud to recommend them. It's like straightforward works. Um, and then it does like runs now now from the from the bin uh, with a token a site token and this is uh, defined in the, the circle CI settings uh, and then it uh, takes a local con wait local config like it takes the staging config here config.json I'm gonna look show you how that works in a minute and then it goes like target production here. This is a little bit confusing because we are deploying a staging configuration. Um, now has like these staging, has like staging and stuff built in, but I found that they were kind of like, I didn't, it obscured things for me a little bit and I couldn't pick the domains. Uh, and uh, yeah, it just messes things up. So I just deploy everything to its own, uh, own little, um, only a staging app, a little environment. It's just, I just prefer it that way of controlling it. So it's whenever it deploys, it always deploys to production um, from the standpoint of site. It just like doesn't use the staging component of site. See here that we have local config production now dot production and local config dot now dot staging. Uh, and that's the entirety of the circle, the circle CI configuration. It's, it's not more complicated than that, which is just very, very cool. Like it's, uh, like it's remarkably easy to work with. Um, let me show you the now dot staging. So if you look at this, this file, this is configuration file for uh, now. Um, this is the Lambda file that we looked upon before, the one with the, the routes and stuff. Uh, and then we uh, say here, like, what's the name of the app? Uh, this scope refers to uh, the team name. Maximum Sheep is the name of uh, our production company um, that we use for everything. Uh, and uh, this alias here is, like, this refers to um, the 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 actual deployment URL. <laughs> yeah. Talk to me, Guzman goes like maximum sheep. Yeah, it's uh, I just like whenever you pick the name, I just didn't want to get stuck on a name, so I just told David that uh, like I just figured that maximum would be a cool prefix, and then just add some kind of noun after that, <laughs> and then like I just find like sheep was fun. Oblivion says, is this repo private? Yes, unfortunately, uh, still is. I'm gonna try to uh, uh, make it public uh, for next time we're working with it so that you have access to it because it's a little bit messy. Uh, the reason that it's private is not that it has to be private, it's more like there's still like some keys in the history and I need to re rotate those keys and think a little bit about security. Uh, where are we? Yeah, so these environment variables here, um, they are uh, like the Twitch client ID here. This is just a, like an ID. We don't, this is not really s uh, s secret. <laughs> Client, for instance, the reason is basically MPJ is not proud enough of it yet. Good point. Uh, it, let's not let's not fool ourselves into anything else. Uh, but these things here, though, that, like the Twitch client secret, this is this actually needs to be secret. Like if I showed this on stream, or if somebody got access to the repo, they could actually use this too. Um, to hurt me, 
Um, so these things are uh, deployed using the, the secrets of, of sight or whatever like. Let's say that um, sight secrets Let's get you an idea. So it's kind of like environment variables that you set on your uh, on your app that cannot be like read out again, like they're stored there. And uh, this is how you refer to them, like with this little at thing. And then it well use them instead. Pretty sleek. Um, then on uh, like. This and the plane now, that Jason, that is thought more to use for, uh, yes, my local deployment. So, you know, when you're using now locally, you can just run now dot, you just run now dev and it works locally. Pretty sleek. Yeah, so what it is that I, uh, <laughs> uh we're a little bit out of time. We're running out of time here. We need to wrap up. Uh, so I, I was hoping that we would be further along and actually have something. Uh, um, I dropped my pen. Have something more concrete. Like all we did was like a walk, walk through of the project. Um, but you know, that's what happens sometimes. What we can do is that we can decide what to do next. Uh, so, I want to have this repo also contain the, um, the client app. So I want to have these two next to each other. Uh, and for this to work, like it can't be named Twitch Token Bridge because partially like this this app is not really a it's not really a Twitch Token Bridge it's more like a uh, it, it's more of a production API uh, endpoint service like it's a general API of of maximum sheep really I think that we could safely call it that uh, because I, I there was so much there's so much setup involved in linting and and deployment and stuff that I think that it, it's pretty good. Like I kind of want this to be a monolith, uh, but more like a monolith with like very strictly separated functions inside of it. Um, and uh, so I want to rename this repo. So let's actually um, go to, jump to the episode notes and talk a little bit what we want to do here. Uh, to do for next time. Um, Uh, organize uh, GitHub repo and build nicely. So we want to do is to rename the repo and service apps to uh, reflect reality. Move um, Backend to subdirectory of repo uh, have circle build it properly um, because there's some complexities getting uh, circles here to work with mono repos and uh, then create next. JS version of uh, FT overlay, which we're calling the thing. Maybe we'll call it something new, maybe OBS overlay or something. Uh, FT stands for failing together, which is a live stream format. And then we are going to what else? We're going to uh, make circle uh, deploy uh, FT overlay automatically. Um, 
Okay, that's also gonna write a test or two for it. It would also be cool to use some kind of... Hey, give me your opinion on this. For tests of React components, what do you like to use? Like I, uh, I, I, back in the days I was really into shallow rendering with, um, uh, with Enzyme. I really liked that model, but I hear that a lot of people have moved away from that using the React testing tools. But reading his article, I was also like, like a little bit unconvinced about his arguments for why that is. So yeah, React testing library. Um, um, yeah, a lot of people seem to like that, but it also seems a little bit like it's not how I test normally. Kind of like these small tests. Cypress, yeah, Cypress is uh, is interesting. And the pixelator says that React component unit testing doesn't provide enough value. Better do some integration tests. Yeah, I mean it's not. I, I, I want to integrate Cypress into this thing. Um, it would be really cool to have that actually. I, uh, because I want this app to be a little bit like a um, showcase of, of, of how I like to build apps. Or like where to try out like best practices and 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 stuff, um, because the problem is that I, I don't do development day to day, so it's it's cool to have like a repo where we like work on our internal real tools that are actually used in production and where we where we actually need to make some some progress and some productivity, and it's not not just like I you know like a refactoring masturbation kind of project, but actually like hey, we need to do things here. Um, before you finish it, uh, it would be remiss of me to let the bug on line 20, 72, 73 go, uh, go unmentioned. Why are we with that? Oh no! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so we have like um, yeah, like a trusted two for it. Um, React testing tools was this is that is called. React test library. All right, yeah, uh, and that's, uh, yeah, and like, I, I also want it to be linted and audited uh, and um, also like monorepo style, so it like deploys the right thing. So like if, if this client is change it, it should deploy the client and if the backend is changed it should deploy uh, yes just, just the backend mm, TypeScript hmm maybe TypeScript uh, maybe TypeScript um, not sure uh, I'm, I'm interested in trying it. It's just like whenever I I run into it. Uh, oh, Altco points out it's React testing library. Thank you. Uh, whenever I use it, it tends to distract me like a lot, a lot. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it will be cool. 
cool to uh, cool to try out like since I'm a huge TypeScript skeptic it might be like a good way for me to like actually uh, be a little bit more structured in my feedback towards TypeScript and say like more clearly why I why I like why I have a problem with it storybook uh, like Build both proof UI components faster. Oh, cool. Provides a sandbox to build UI components in isolation to, so you can develop hard to reach states and edge cases. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, story, maybe storybook. Uh, Maybe Framer, like, see? Uh, yeah, and uh, like one, one thing I also want to add to all this is Sentry. Sentry is like super cool. Um, oh, is there an yet another thing like Doc Oh, what is this? Oh, that's cool. How am I here? Let's, let's... Why the hell not? What is... Uh, we talked about style guidist. React Style Guide is, is a component development environment with hot reloaded dev server and living style guide that you can share with the team. List components, prop types, and show live editable usage example based on markdown files. Check out this demo style guide. Okay. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, this is not a bad idea considering that uh, we could do something like that because to allow David to do like these things here, like um, let me switch so that we get a, um, get a sponsor. So like these sponsors here below is, would be really nice if, uh, if David could edit like in a like style guidey kind of thing and it's also like what it would be cool to have like a, a finished finished tool for that that would be nice oh that's cool Robert table suggests like a um, feature flag tool that we talked about before like we we'll launched darkly that's a very really cool idea and feature flags adding that Darko says by the way uh, the reason I like TypeScript is because it really helps me with development I don't really have to check my functions to see what they accept VS Code just tells me I know that JS doc can help with that but not that many people use it TypeScript kind of forces it yeah uh, I'm more of a like I, uh, I I just yeah I tend to turn off IntelliSense because it's so often wrong. Uh, it's um, I um, I also like like uh, I find that when I use I really like when I kind of like I, I don't like adding tools that help me manage complexity too much I like the fact that well, like that it just makes my brain hurt with long function signatures because that makes me not have complicated function signatures um, um, 
Yeah, Robert Chabel says, I personally don't 100% subscribe to the idea of embracing a whole different language just to satisfy some particular IDE features. Yeah, um, I I, uh, I concur. That said, like I, I do, that there's something about static typing that appeals to me, but um, IntelliSense, eh, not so much. I think that a function, like a, a function, like I, I'm more of in favor of like, clear function names and like obvious parameter names. Um, like I just like coding that way. Um, but I totally see like the value of static time. It would be nice if you like help me not make mistakes or like add that little bit of an extra security and not having to do like runtime checks. Uh, but you have still have to do runtime checks if you're calling APIs anyway. So I'm like, yeah, nah, nah. Yeah, uh, I think there's this. Uh, there is some nice, uh, nice aspect to it, but uh, mm, yeah, I'm skeptical. But that's that's probably why I should be doing it. Talk to me, Gooseman. The only time I like TypeScript is having typing for third-party integrations or API payloads. Yeah. Like that is where I find that uh, types really shine when you're dealing with contracts. Um, when there are parts of your code that you really don't want to change, you know, like you want them to change slowly. That's when it's good to have types, I think. Uh, because like whenever I change things, it's just like I need this types involved. There's like so much like, yeah, like, I don't know. Um, anywho, um, I'm gonna close it off there. Um, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for, uh, for watching. Uh, it was so nice to have you here, and I hope you're gonna have a, have a fantastic, uh, fantastic Friday. I'm going to, uh, ask you to, as usual, I would like us to have a quote from someone, like a nice, like, saying or something that you heard last week or something that is like your motto or something that we can that I can read to set the tone for the week. I really like this one, the first one that it posted by Mr. Maru. It's so beautiful. Make peace with the worst case so you can fight with a free heart. With that, we leave you. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic week. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out our sponsors this week. Sponsor was Linode. You can find out information about them in the episode description as well as a coupon code. And also you can check out Circle CI, which is an ongoing show sponsor that we like very much also in the episode description. These shows are recorded live on Twitch on Monday mornings. So you can check out what that is in your time zone by going to twitch.tv slash funfunfunction. If you want to check out more about what funfunfunction is about, you can check out this playlist here. Or if you just already there and want to subscribe right now and for more episodes, you can click here. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.